Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They'll try and buy your treasures off you for a cash sum on the table today. Could you make it for 50? Oh. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm gonna say no way, Jose. Reject that offer. Have a gamble. Go to auction. You may get a little bit more money there. 280, 300, 320, 340. The order this time then. I will be on hand at all times to help and advise members of the public. Today the show comes to you from Lancaster. There is a great crowd of people here. They are determined to sit down with our dealers and get the better of them and then walk away with the real deal. Plenty of people have turned out to welcome David and the team here in Lancaster. What better way to start the day than with a piece of local pottery? I've seen Tim looking at it. I think he likes it, and I'm really hoping to get a good price. Let's hope so, Vivian. Now, a little birdie tells me that you're called Vivian Lee. And that's correct, yes. Well, what a name. <laughs> you know, a beautiful lady like yourself. Well, thank you. <laughs> and today you've brought in this piece of Royal Lancastrian. I have, yes. When I was a child, that was the fruit bowl. That's where I got my apples and oranges from. Belonged to my mother, before that her father, and before that his aunt and uncle. So I believe they had it as a wedding present somewhere between 1900 and 1910. Yeah, spot on. Mm. The date's absolutely spot on. So you've, you've known it all your life? Yes, absolutely. And do you like it, Vivian? No, you don't. <laughs> you, you do. It does not suit my house. What's desirable about this is, because it's lustreware. Yeah. Now, this is based on Greek mythology. Mm. Now, I'm not very up on my <laughs> Greek mythology, are you? No, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> so we've got this um, Greek man, and he's got two horses here. And then round here, we've got these, like, Greek warriors here. And then I'm presuming it's Greek right in there. Do you know what that says? I have no idea, no. Vivian's I'd... fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did Latin, but not Greek. Oh, <laughs> what you like, Vivian. We've got a chariot here, and then underneath here, it's got the Royal Lancastrian mm. mark impressed. I like it, but do you know what doesn't rock my boat about it? Mm. Shall I tell you? The colour. <laughs> yes. That aside, I'm going to make you an offer, Vivian. OK. You do want to sell I it, I do want to you? sell it, yes. I need the money. <laughs> 50. 100 pounds, Vivian. No. I thought you said you needed no, money. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, quite a bit more than that, though. 150 pounds. No. Here comes David. Hello. 150? Yes. Royal Lancastrian. Now we've got two estimations, 250, 350, three to five. Perhaps going up to the five is rather bullish, but I think we're worth more than 150. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right. 200 pounds. No. 220. No. 240. No. No. Look, I I'll take that away, Vivian, mm. and I'll, I'll... £250. No. Another one of those. R well, look, look, look. Two nights. <laughs> oh. Come on, Vivian. You could swap those for 300 You're not going to lose on it. Right, Vivian. Just for you, I'm going to be your Clark Gable today. <laughs> oh. And I'm going to take that away and I'm going to put that there. And I'll pounds. accept that. We, got a we deal. have a deal. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And you have been hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Tim, was interested in it. And with David's help, I've got a really good deal. That's what we like to hear. Another deal is brewing, a tea caddy is next up for Stuart Hofgartner. Not ever so excited about it, but uh, 
they, they do get, make money. I'm hoping I can make 120, 150 on it. And it depends on the dealer, you know, what he offers. Then I'm just going to spend it on wine and women. <laughs> Has Jim got his priorities right? Let's see how generous Stuart's feeling today. I guess you know what it is, do you? Yep, it's a Georgian it tea caddy. I just wondered originally if it would have had bun feet or bracket feet on. It's possible, but, but looking at the style of it, I would have thought probably not. Right. It. So with all the inlay and the shape of the top, the casket shape, then casket shape, right. probably not. Okay. Nice that it's got the original hinges that sort of got stopped hinges to stop it going right over. Would these be original as well? I suspect that's not. The brass is showing through a bronzy colour, which is a bit like that, yeah. which to me says that that's not Georgian, although it looks it. But I think the whole tea caddy is of that age. We're talking 1800, give or take yeah. 20 years. Right. Um, I don't think it would have had a hand like that on it, but it, it did have something there. And I looked inside, and um, it seems strange to have a leather interior. Because mm. being a tea caddy, it would have had two lift out boxes here and a centre compartment, yeah. perhaps, for um, mixing the tea in. But I think this looks original. Yeah. And you can actually see some of the silver the paper foil, lining, the yeah. foil, yeah. yeah. So uh, it looks like it's always been a tea caddy. Good. A um, little bit of a near of the stringing here missing in places. Right. Particularly on the front, but, but quite presentable. Tell me a bit about how you got it and where it come from. Where I, it's come I bought from. it online several years ago and I did have it on display, but now it's in a cupboard, out of sight, so... Not, not ever kept tea in it? No, no. I did notice a few tea leaves in the bottom, actually. <laughs> But, uh, you can have them as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Providing I buy it, yeah. Providing so I buy let's it. have a yeah, go, shall we? True. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140 pounds. You're getting that. <laughs> uh, 160 pounds, but but that's her price, I'm afraid. Is that your final offer? That's my price. Another 10? 160 pound. Then I'll accept your offer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was great. I got a good price, more than I actually thought. It's hot money from Stuart. Will Mark Stevens be as generous? A very pretty commercial five-stone ring. I'm hoping to get about £600, if possible. I like this. It would be something that I think we could sell in the shop. Mark's keen and Sally's got high hopes. Let's get the deal underway. Inherited piece, or have you purchased it? Uh, my mother gave it to me, not long before she died, actually. Do you wear it at all? Is it something you know? I've worn it about three times, that's all. I'm not a real jewellery person. It's a very pretty ring, though. I'm glad you think so. Yeah, no, I like it. It's, it's a very traditional diamond five-stone ring. Yes. I think it was probably made in the 1930s. Yes. Um, it will certainly be 18 karat gold, there's no doubt about that. And inside there, we have the 18 CT mark. Good, good. Um, it's very, very hard to tell the diamond weight unless we take them out and actually weigh them on diamond scales. I see. But I think if we were to take these out, we're going to be around that area. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a very, very pretty ring. I mean, I like the way that it, the stones, it's got the nice size in the middle and it comes, graduate down to the smaller size. Yes, it does. It's a wearable ring. Even though it was made in the 1930s, it's very traditional. It's one of these rings that they don't go out of fashion. No, it doesn't age kind it of It doesn't thing. age, that's no. right. So, shall I put some money on the table? Oh, please. Yes? yes. Right, okay, let's see what we've got. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Right. I'm not stopping. No. 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. Right. I'm not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 40, 60, 80, 300 pounds. 320, 340, 360, 380, £400 on the table, Sally. And I think David's going to come to give you some advice. Oh. Not a bad start on the table. Three, two, five, four to six is the estimation. Right. To do better than that, if you went to auction, you'd have to get £500. 
He's a generous man. Nice smile. Yes, nice but smile. But don't be deceived by that because <laughs> he's as sharp as razors, OK? Mm. See if you can get a little more, and if you can, I would accept it. Thank you, David. You want a bit more, don't you? I do. I really do. £420. <laughs> no. <laughs> what yeah. I do is I put a £10 note on the table, 430 Could you make it 450 Oh! And, and then I would, then I would really shake your hand at four fifty. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take away the ten pound. I'm going to put that there. Four hundred and forty pound. Can we have a deal, Sally, today? Yes. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Loved it. Really pleased to buy that. I really didn't want to go to auction. Uh, so I thought, well, I'd better take take the money and run. Name in, in grey. Coming up, Stuart meets his match. You're not by any chance a, an auctioneer, are you? No, I'm not, but my dad was and my granddad. I'm going to try and buy that. Just how will this deal unravel for the gavel? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Still the crowd pour in with their antiques and collectibles. It's over to Corrie Jeffrey's table next, where a Moorcroft collection awaits. I've watched this programme a lot. I haven't seen Corrie on it a great deal, so I don't know what she's like. Well, you can usually rely on Corrie to pay well, if she likes what's on the table. It belonged to a friend of my mother-in-law's, and it was left to the mother-in-law in, -law in the, her will, and the mother-in-law passed it on to us. Unfortunately, it's not our sort of thing to have around the house. We've watched this programme a lot, so we thought we'd fetch it down to see what we could get for it. Very wise. But, unfortunately, there are two pieces that are damaged. And it's a pity, because it's the two prettiest little useful vases. A single candlestick, ashtray, little pin dish, and the two little posy holders. Yes. And you've got two different patterns here. This one and... This one are orchids, yeah. and these are a different... I think they're hibiscus. And there they are, clearly marked Moorcroft. Yep. And the original label, and I suspect they're just after the war, Second World War. And some of the earlier Moorcroft is very, very desirable and very valuable. It's certain patterns and certain shapes, and you really have a very good following in the north of England. Yes, we do. So, I believe you've got a mission. Yes, our son gets married this year, so any spare cash will go to the wedding. OK, well, let's see what we can do. Twenty... Forty... Sixty... Eighty. I've got eighty pounds on the table. It's not a bad start. It's not a bad start. I'm not going to go a lot further, I'm afraid. That's another 20 on the table. That's 100. Who's David? <laughs> well, Hello, David. £100 is on the table. Quite a realistic offer when you consider the estimation from both the auctioneer and the independent values is 1 to 150. In auction, this is popular. There are people who like to bid at it. But, you know, you'd have to get 120 to come out with 100. Mm -hmm. You might get a bit more at auction, but it won't be much. Right, thank you. So can I persuade you just to put a little bit more on the table? I'm there. I'm really there. There's 20 quid left in it for me. So 100 is my Ten. offer. Because you're so hard on me. No. I'm going to put a fiver on. Oh, another 10. <laughs> another five, and that is it. I'm so mean. You're a hard lady. Yeah, accurate as ever. We have a deal. Yeah. Thank you. She's a very hard lady to deal with, but we didn't do too badly. Did I do OK? I'm afraid time's going to have to tell me. It certainly will, Corrie. We'll find out if she manages to mark up the Moorcroft later on in the show. Back to oh, our Tim. Says. He's been joined by Winifred, who's brought along her novelty inkwell. I'm just going to demonstrate how it works. 
open it up, and then you click that, mm -hmm. and you've got your inkwell there. Now, have you had that a long time, Winifred? Um, yeah, it belongs to my son. He's had it probably mm, 30 odd years. And did he did he buy it? Does he collect inkwells? Or? No, he, he was just a young man. He went to a jumble sale, I think, with me. He picked it up a jumble oh, sale. That's a good jumble sale find, then, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Because mm. this is probably in date about 1900. Novelty in quell. Now they do all sorts of novelty in quells. You've got like like this hats. You get animals. You get violin cases. All sorts. Now, can you remember what you paid for it, Winifred, at no. the jumble sale? No, won't paid much. It won't have been a lot, will it? No, no. Right, Winifred. Fifty pounds. 50. No. Sixty no. pounds. No. You said that before I got it down, Winifred. <laughs> These novelty things, they are collectible, but I'm trying to think of selling it, you say, Winifred, and how much I would get for it. So if I took that away and put that there, £70, no. when I don't get these notes down quick enough before you're saying no to me. <laughs> £70, Winifred. No. 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 Well, I'm going to the bottom of the pile now. £75. No. No, well, another ten or so. I think mean, that's a good offer if he's bought at a jumble sale. Well, it was his birthday last week, so I was thinking, you know, round figure for his birthday. Round figure. <laughs> well, £75. No. I would say no to £75. Someone will give it to me for my birthday. I wonder if it would be better at auction. I don't know. The, the one thing I will say about it is, it is a novelty item which mm. appeals to, to the market. Mm -hmm. You only need two inkwell collectors. But that's that's where I want to be. I, I don't want to pay any more for it. You wouldn't put a ten down, would you? Instead of five. No. Oh, well. Auction? So, yes. You're going to auction? Yeah, I'll try it auction. Mm. Well, thank you, right. Winifred. Okay. You tried giving Tim a run for his money, Winifred, but instead the reins have been passed to the auctioneer, Kevin Kendall, as the hat is thrown into the ring. Do you remember what he paid for it all those years ago? About 20 pence, then. OK, about 20 pence. <laughs> now, on the deals today, you sat down with Tim, one of our deals, and he said, I'll give you 75 quid. Yes. Were you tempted by I that? I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I would have thought £75 was quite a good offer, yeah. but it's here in the sale room, the reserve is 80 quid. Yes. Now, the question is, is it going to make the £80 or not? Let's find out. Lot number 30, then, the copper and leather inkwell, modelled as a Stetson, rather nice, interesting curio. I have got interest. I'm going to start the bidding with me at £100, 100 bid. 100 bid, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 160, 170, 180, 180. They like it. 180, looking for 90 anywhere. 180 pounds, we'll sell if there's no further interest, and we'll sell at 180. The gamble's just gone down at 180 pounds. We need to take off the commission, and that's going to leave you with about 153 quid. Now, what's your first thoughts? We sold the throat of bits. <laughs> On the day. The real deal was £180, knock off the commission, 153 quid. Now, that was the real deal. Back to Stuart in the dealer's den. And what will he bid on this auctioneer's gamble? I do like gambles, and I don't desperately need it, but I'd like to buy it. But as Stuart met his match on this deal. You're not by any chance uh, an auctioneer, are you? No, I'm not, but my dad was. And oh, my he grand... was an auctioneer, was he? And my granddad. And did they use this? Oh, was yes. this one of these? Yes, it's well worn. <laughs> oh, I've got to say, at this stage, why are you not keeping it? Uh, I know it's not what we're here for, but... Well, I'm a hoarder. Ah. And I've got a lot of things that my dad brought, and I just need to downsize now. I do like it. And it's ivory. Yes. And um, nice discoloration in places, which just puts a nice age on it. Um, one disappointing feature is the, that it's been glued in there. So yeah. what I'm hoping, if I do buy it, um, I'm hoping that I can find some way of dissolving that glue to get rid of all the, right. the sign of it, because it's probably just the thread gone or... I don't know the history of the glue at all. I'm sure the auctioneer here is dying to get his hands on it, but right. I'm going to try and buy that. Okay. I do like it. I shouldn't have told you that, but I do like it. <laughs> it's very good. All too. 
60, 80, 100, 120, 140 pounds. Could it go a little bit higher? 150. You're still not sure. Let's make it 160. Do we have a deal? We do. Lovely. Thank you very much. I could well keep that because it's just a lovely thing. Ivory Gable couldn't get a better one and I bought it. I'm well pleased. So the auctioneer's daughter hammered out a very good price. The gavel looks like a keeper for Stuart. Still to come, a historical domestic artefact arrives with Mark. It's a thing for keeping the wife off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better buy that for definitely. <laughs> yeah. But will Mark's offer cut it with our seller? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We've had all sorts come through the doors here in Lancaster, but nothing quite like this next item. Rather unusual dagger. Don't know too much about it. I'm hoping I can get a bit more information off the bill here. If I can get anything like a £100 plus, I'll be over the moon, or I might take an holiday to the moon. So Bill thinks his dagger's out of this world, but will our dealer unearth a tempting offer? Well, what have you bought me here? Well, it's a thing for keeping the wife off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better buy that for definitely. <laughs> yeah. One of my mates was uh, in the army. I think he brought it home in wartime. You know how to hold it, do you? I, th I don't know. You're going to say... Well, you hold it like that. But if you've I've got, got I haven't done anything wrong yet, it please. Also no, makes I've done a good nothing. Tooth. But the trouble is, he had two sons, you see, and I had to take it off there because they're always fighting each other. What with that? Well, I don't know. It could oh, be dangerous. Very dangerous. Oh. Well, it screams Indian to me. I think it's a, a Qatar dagger. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's 18th century. Yeah. Very unusual. I mean, I, I've probably only seen one or two of these. I mean, well, I've never <laughs> seen one before. I've, I've seen very. Very, very similar in specialist auctions. Yeah. Unfortunately, the condition of this one, I don't think is particularly good. It's one of those things. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think what we can do with it. Um, well, you can do a bit of gardening with it if you put some string around here. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your horse straight. <laughs> um, I don't think it's got massive value, but should we try and have a deal on it, Bill? Go on, then. But if try you your best. I'm going to try my best, but what are you going to do with the money? I didn't realise what to do, really. Uh, Take your wife out for a meal? I hope it's better than fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll treat her to a nice bit of steak. Right, let's see what we've got in the pocket. 20, 40, how about 60 pound, Bill? No, I'll, I'll have to have more than that. You get a nice I've bit of steak? I've got to take it home and these lads might start fighting me, never mind fighting with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, how about another £20, Bill? Hey, look, there's £80. Pounds. What yeah. does that sound like to you? Come on. That lovely smile you've been giving me, I was just rubbing my fingers before and saying, I'm going to do well here. Oh. What a disappointment. <laughs> oh, well, it's not something really I, I buy a lot of, I must be very yeah. honest. But look, tell what I do, Bill. Let's see what we've got in here. I thought that was a £50 note you were putting oh, on. Oh, no, Go on, they've on. gone. I've got none of them left whatsoever. Look, another £10, £90 on the table. Change that to a 20 and I'll take it then. Oh, Bill, I, I can't, honestly. I, I don't want to be hard with you, but really, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Well, I'll take the knife. Oh, no, <laughs> you're going to walk to now. Best of luck, Bill. Yeah. I hope you do really well. I hope well we don't there. tip up. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Lovely man, Bill, really liked him. But ugh, a bit dubious when I didn't offer him enough money for that, I thought I was going to get it. I was very unsure about the price, and I'm doing a favour for one of my old pals, so I thought I might take it to the Kendall auction rooms. Bill's got a plan, so it's off to the auction. Now, Bill, you brought along a dagger. Yeah. Um, it looks to be from the East, probably Indian. Uh, where did you get it from? I got it from an old army friend where we used to make big mates and went walking. So did he do yeah. service in the Second World War somewhere out that way, Singapore, India, those kind yes, of areas? Yes, he was uh, all over there. OK, so probably bought this back as a souvenir. You turn down 90, there is a reserve of 100. Let's see what happens, it's coming up now. Uh, lot 45 is the Qatar dagger. Yeah, there's some decoration to the blade. 
Uh, what are you going to start me on it? Hundred pounds. Hundred pounds. Somebody. Hundred. They're looking for a hundred. They're looking for fifty now. Fifty bid. Fifty bid. Fifty bid. Fifty bid. Five anywhere. Five. Sixty. Five. Seventy. It's creeping. Seventy pounds now. Seventy bid. Five anywhere. Seventy bid. Seventy bid. Seventy pounds. If you hold on this time, then at seventy, it is reserved. I'm afraid we can't sell it at that. The gavel has gone down at seventy pounds. It hasn't sold because you have a reserve of a hundred pounds. I think it's worth a little bit more than that. So I think it's worth taking home, Bill. On another day, another sale room, I think it should do a lot better. On this particular day, it just didn't make its money. That's the gamble. That's a gamble. Back to some more wheeling and dealing in the den. Stuart has a pair of interesting walking sticks on his table. How you acquired them? Is it something you've had in the family? Or? No, it's just for a house renovation of a friend's. I've just seen him standing there and he was actually going to put them in the skip. So was he? I said, please, can I take them? And he said, yeah, of course you can, yeah, no problem. What do you know about them apart from that? Uh, not a lot, really. Right. No, I haven't well, done any sort of research. Walking sticks are always good things. I mean, there's lots of following yeah. for, for walking sticks. The best type would be um, system sticks, we call them. They do other things. Mm. Uh, both of these are straightforward sticks. Yeah. Uh, as far as they're just a walking stick, but uh, it's the materials they're made of and the style of things that's yeah. of interest. This is the one out of the two of them, which you probably yeah. know already. Yeah. I, I could quickly deal with that one. It's not a particularly old cane, um, silver top that I think has been put onto a, a later cane. Yeah. The silver top's probably 1920s, very badly repaired and bashed yes. about. Uh, interesting how they grew these on purpose. Right. A lot of the old country folk, the, the uh, shepherds and people like that, would uh, actually pick a piece of, uh, say, ivy or something other and yeah. grow it up, or start it growing up a stem so they can come back later and, and right. harvest it for a stick. Right. So it's quite interesting, but yeah. a very poor head on it, so not mm. of any great interest. Yeah. Your value is in this one. Um, it's a strange combination because this, which is great, is ivory, but this is actually bone. Right. So from there on down, uh, it would have been much nicer if it had been ivory, but it's still yeah. a nice, presentable cane. So that's the one that I would be valuing yeah. from the two. Um, I know about them, I like them, so let's have a go at buying it. Okay. okay. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 120 quid. Like a, a little bit more. 140. Deal. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. I was quite happy. I said 150. 140 was good enough. I was going to stick at that anyway, so I'm pleased. It was short, but oh, so very sweet for Carl. He's walking home with 140 smackers, and the walking sticks cost him nothing. Now that's what I call profit. Coming up after the break, a highly speculative lot arrives in the dealer's den. The question is whether it's period or whether it's a 19th century item, but with an earlier Ming mark. I have a good feeling, yeah. but I'm not totally convinced. <laughs> if the pot is Ming, just what will it bring? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. There's been lots of action in the den already, and finishing off today's dealing is Corrie. She's been joined by Sheila. I brought in what I believe is a Chinese cooking pot. Mm. Problem is, is it 19th century? It's a gamble. I have really no idea how much it's worth. There's plenty of speculation over this oriental piece, so the Duke and auctioneer Kevin Kendall are keen to be a part of the action. Well, I will say, I looked over and saw this, what looked like a brass pot, mm -hmm. and then I went to lift it. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. that's a fair old weight, isn't right. it? A it lovely is. weight. Yeah. So it's not brass, it's yeah, bronze. It's bronze, yeah. And very, very, very simple, mm -hmm. until you turn it over, and it's marked. It's beautifully marked. So let's have Chinese characters. And of course, I read Chinese fluently. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Just like myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a lovely mark, actually. And a very, very simple bowl. It was my mother's. Uh, I've had it for 47 years uh, when she passed away. I had a plant in it for a short while. 
but then I put it away and it's just been sat hidden. What are you going to spend the money on? I've no idea because I don't know how much it's going to fetch and I can't count my chickens before they're hatched. It does have a seal mark underneath, which is an early one, probably a Ming mark. The question is whether it's period or whether it's a 19th century item, but with an earlier mark on it. There's always divided opinion with these things. Um, it could be 15th, 16th century, or it may be much later. Um, the only way to decide is really to have it on the market and let the market decide. Our estimate would probably be very sensible around about the £500 mark, um, but there's nothing to say that it won't make several times that if a couple of Chinese buyers do decide that it is right. OK. What's Corrie going to do? Will she fancy it? Will she have a gamble? Let's find out. 50... 100... 50... 200... I'm smiling at you. <laughs> 50, 300, 50. We've got 400 on the table there. Are we starting? Right. Oh, we've got David here to help me. What we've got here is speculative. We've already seen the mark on the bottom. The mark is a very early mark. Uh -huh. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it comes from that period. Now, mm -hmm. we've got a variety of estimations here. We have three to four, we have four to five, and we have five to eight. Now, mm -hmm. the question is, is it Ming period, the great Ming period, or is it a 19th century item with an early seal mark on it? Nice. It's a bit of a gamble here. Okay. You either take that or maybe she will tempt you with a little more or you go to auction and gamble that okay. some other people will see it even more than Corrie. Right, thank you. I have a good feeling. Yes. But I'm not, I'm not totally convinced. But... If you go to auction, 15% is what you lose. So if I put a bit more money on the table and see how you feel. OK. Uh -huh. So that's 450. Yeah. 500, mm -hmm. 550. Are we tempted? No. 600. Is that your final offer? You are so. <laughs> you know I like gambling, don't you? It's written all <laughs> over my face, isn't it? Okay, the last queen's head. That really is my final offer. Uh, if you went to 700. Or we'll take away the 20. Right. And you've got 700 on the table. It is a good offer, but I think I'd still prefer to go to auction. Well, yeah. I think you're a brave woman, so I wish you the very, very best of luck. Oh. I hope Thank you do you. really well. Thank you, Kari. You turned down £700 from our dealer, Cory Jeffries. Any regrets about that? No, not really, no. Bit nervous? Well, yes, a little bit nervous okay. about it, but... The reserve is 500 so you realise when you take the gamble, if it's sold at 500 minus the commission, you would be worse off. Yeah. So the gamble yeah. is, did Sheila get it right? I think I was one of those that advised you to gamble. Let's hope it pays off. It's coming up now. Is it an early piece? I suspect it may well be. Lot number 60 is the Chinese bronze sensor, uh, probably 18th century. I've got several commission bids, and I'm going to have to start the bidding with me at £700. 700, 700 pounds. That, that's what you turned down, so that's not bad. 850. 850 now. 850. 850. 900 on the phone. Thank you. 900. 900. They're looking phone. towards the internet. 950, 1,000 bid, 1,000 bid. Like 11 now if we can, please. 1,100, 1,200, 1,300. Several people bidding on the internet. Where are they bidding from, I wonder? 1,400, 1,400, 1,500 on the next. 1,500. We're slowing down now, 1,500. 1,500 pounds then. Did Sheila make the right gamble? Of course she did. At 1,500. £1,500 on the internet. 
You just never know who was bidding. That could be someone from mainland China. We just do not know. What's your first reaction at 1,500 quid? I'm absolutely stunned. <laughs> So, take away the commission and you're going home with £1,275. Now that, that's a great deal. That's the real deal. The auction served up a tremendous price for Sheila. But how have our dealers done today after spending over £1,300 of their hard-earned cash? First up is our Tim, with his single buy of the day. What's desirable about this is because it's lustre wear. The Lancastrian pottery was sold on to a fellow trader for £340. It was just the one item for Mark today as well. I like this. It would be something that I think we could sell in the shop. Mark knew just the client for the ring to bring him a tidy profit. And Corrie only made one deal too, the collection of Moorcroft. Unfortunately, there are two pieces that are damaged. And it's a pity because it's the two prettiest little vases. Even with the damage, our dealer still passed the Moorcroft on for a profit. This just leaves Stuart, who cleared up today buying three lots. I'm guessing you know what it is, do you? Yep, it's a Georgian tea caddy. It brought some interest in his shop and was sold on for a profit. You're not by any chance uh, an auctioneer, are you? So what was the fate of the gavel? I could well keep that, because it's just a lovely thing. True enough. Stuart took a shine to the hammer and has kept it for himself. Finally, it was a mixed result for the walking canes. That's the one that I would be valuing from the two. He sold the better of the two sticks on for £250, however decided to give the other away to a friend. Oh, very nice of you, Stuart. We've just had a really exciting result here in the sale room. Sheila turned down £700 on the dealer's day for a Chinese incense burner. It's just brought 1,500 quid under the gavel. Woo! What a good price. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. TTFN. Ta-ta for now.